way I speak to myself matters because it manifests in physical form, whether I'm aware of it or not. There was a time in my life, which was not that long ago, that I would have many, many repetitive thoughts internally, uh, subconsciously that I wasn't aware of. And uh, this is what I looked like before. And this is what I looked like after changing those thoughts, those feelings, and those beliefs about myself. And it felt like beforehand, that was just me. And I couldn't do anything about it because it was just who I am. And it was extremely hard to change that, which makes sense because those thoughts that I was thinking about myself were constantly playing in my head almost every day, almost 24 seven. And probably since I've been a really young kid, uh, because that insecurity and my belief in myself was implanted into my mind at a young age. Not on purpose, I think. I mean, it just happens naturally. Our parents try and <laughs> they do their best, but obviously everybody is human and they have their own things that they're carrying. So whatever our parents typically believe about themselves, we believe about ourselves and we carry and we become. So um, I had so many like repetitive thoughts in my mind that I became aware of through meditation. And uh, I've been doing meditating for four years straight now and I didn't actually recognize them until I think one year ago when I was in the Netherlands and I was doing a deep meditation and I was like, oh, why do I always feel so bad? Like my, my gut always feels really heavy and I always feel fat and I always feel not enough and I always feel not, like, not great in my own body. And like no matter what I do, no matter what to try and try to remedy that I try to fix it with, it doesn't go away. Like that feeling is just there and it's always been there. I don't know myself outside of that. And I recognized the thoughts that came with that feeling. And then I wrote them down. And the thoughts that came with that really heavy feeling in my gut were like, uh, I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. I will never be enough. I will never look good enough. And it all stemmed from like a lot of insecurity inside that um, was probably picked up from seeing that in my mom when I was a little kid because I remembered in my meditation that I was in the fitting room with her and I was really young I think like four or five years old and this memory came back to me and she was trying on clothes and she obviously felt not very great about herself and started speaking into herself in that same exact way and that emotionally like hit something in my body to whereas I developed that same programming myself and I manifested through that belief and that programming on like my entire life up until like last year and um it was kind of crazy seeing that because I like I said I haven't known myself apart from that I hadn't known myself apart from that ever so recognizing that was insane and I was like, wow, maybe I'm just believing this, but this isn't the truth. And if I change my beliefs, I will change who I am because your thoughts plus your feelings creates your reality, you know? So you change your thoughts, you change your feelings, you change your reality. My thoughts plus my feelings, I'm not good enough. I'll never be good enough. My body will never look how I want it to look. I'll never feel comfortable in my body. Creates that change it to, I love my body, I'm confident in my body, um, I love the way that I look, I feel amazing in my body, and then it brings it to that. Um, but it obviously seems a little bit harder than just saying that because obviously when we just say that, there's so much resistance and feelings that come up in the body when you even just say that sentence because there's that programming since you've been a little girl or a little guy <laughs> that's been there for so long, like years and years and years of like hardwired programming of you repeating and believing that thought over and over and over again. So how do you get rid of that thought and that feeling to replace it with something that is more giving or beneficial for your life or the life that you want to live? <sighs> wow, powerful. This is <laughs> meditation. <laughs> um, why? Because all of our programming is in our subconscious minds and our bodies. We pick it up from ages one to seven. So all of our feelings, beliefs, worldviews, 
anything about life we've usually picked up from our caregivers from ages one to seven. And that's when our brains are in theta, brain waves, receiving sponge-like state. You know, like when people say, oh wow, his mind is a sponge. That's true. It's true. Like if you teach children multiple languages from ages one to seven, they're going to learn it way faster than you could at age 15 or even 20. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> ages one to seven, sponge state. We, we pick up all of these beliefs about ourselves, about our life. And some of them aren't very, uh, you know, good for us, obviously. And then it ends up, yeah, co-creating that reality. So you can't just change it by being like, okay, I love myself, I love myself, I love my body, da 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 da, -da. Because there's gonna be one, a bunch of resistance and like a bunch of like heavy feelings that come up with you stating that. And then honestly, this is why sometimes affirmations don't work is because that comes up and then you're like at the back of your head that voice is like yeah no that's not true at all that's not true at all and then it keeps actually digging in deeper as to why that's not true uh the key is you need to get back into the same brain waves and the same state of mind that you received that programming in which is theta brain waves um we don't really typically live in theta brain waves as adults past age seven we go to alpha and then beta and then high beta. And a lot of us are just op operating in beta or high beta most of the time. Beta is really good for school. It helps us memorize things and prepare for tests. So after seven, most of our life is just preparing and doing a bunch of tests. Um, and our brain waves can get into alpha state, which is, by the way, I'll put a chart here to make a little bit more sense. Our brain waves are in alpha state typically when we are dozing off and going to sleep or just waking up or even when we're consuming content, watching TV, our brain waves kind of, you know, you can just tune out when you get home from school or work and just start watching TV. Your brain waves kind of go to alpha state where it's kind of just like receptive, a little bit meditative, just like you're kind of, you're kind of there, but you're not like, you know, you're not like at work and like studying and doing a bunch of intense tasks. So yeah. <laughs> how do you get to theta though which is the one under alpha if you can get your body and your mind in a peaceful and relaxed state by meditating uh, and with your breath work you can reach back to the brain waves where your mind and your body and like your brain waves are back in the state that you received all that programming in so that's really important to know i think that was one of the most life-changing things I read because I was like, oh, wait, that makes total sense as to why it's so hard to change because we're always trying to fight our programming that is hardened inside of us. And that programming that we got when we were a kid is like, that's 95% of our mind. It's the subconscious mind. And then the other 5% is the conscious mind that we're operating like day to day, doing like repetitive tasks. So, or no, subconscious is doing the repetitive, <laughs> like, it's basically like you wake up and you brush your teeth and then you go drive a car and then you go do this. It's like things that you just naturally do without having to think about. So with that being said, go into meditation. You can bring your brainwaves back to that state. And then once you are in a state of receiving again, once you're in that sponge brain state again, you can start implanting new beliefs, heightened feelings like amazing feelings of like, oh, how would I feel if this belief was true? Or that maybe this belief is actually the truth now. Like maybe I do love myself now and I feel extremely comfortable in my body and I love my body. Um, and you can start to like implant that, which is what I did. And it took way more than just one time doing it. Like this was something I consistently was working on every single day and recognizing and aware of every single day. And, um, after that, I started to see shifts in my life naturally without resistance. And it's, I can't say like it was a really difficult or hard thing to do because it wasn't. So I implanted different beliefs that were more serving towards the reality that I wanted to experience. Like, I love my body. I love my life. I feel very comfortable in my body and multiple things. I have like a whole affirmations list for them. 
and I made sure to go through a few of them in my meditations every single morning when my brain waves reached that state. And also I made sure not just to say it, but to also feel it because that is the other very important step in this is to uh, feeling because it's your thoughts plus your feelings that's creating the reality. So you gotta do both. And it actually, it becomes very easy to do that when you get in a almost daydream-like state, which is kind of what it is. If you're good at daydreaming and visualizing, then this might come like super easy to you. Uh, and then, yeah, I started to see subtle shifts in my life just naturally. And I was like, wow, this is happening kind of easily. Like I, I subconsciously, subconsciously started making different decisions that ended up changing the way that I looked but also i don't think it was just physical i think it really was the way i was talking to myself um because i like to think of like the that plant um that plant experiment that they did they took three plants and then one person like they spoke love into one plant they ignored one plant and then they spoke hatred into one plant and guess which one grew the one that you spoke love into. Guess which one died? The one that they spoke hate into. And guess which one mm, kind of stayed the same, kind of didn't really do it. It was the middle one that they ignored. So I like to think of it like that. We are just as living, if not more, than a plant. <laughs> and uh, yeah, when I changed that, then everything started to change and it went, it was way more in flow and way less resistance to you know, me being like, okay, I'm going to start a diet. I'm going to get a gym routine and I'm going to uh, watch those motivational videos that scream at myself while I'm working out to try to change myself. And more so, it was like a very easy and flowy way of changing without resistance. Uh, and yeah, I think going through that was a big, big... I broke something off that's probably been in my family line for years and years and years and after that the feeling in my body I finally feel free from I don't feel so like heavy and constrained those thoughts are no longer there um and they they actually don't come up anymore because I've replaced them with elevated feelings and emotions and thoughts and yeah now I'm living in that reality that I felt like before was completely impossible to get into and I think the consensus for this for me was like, if I can do that with something that's been there my entire life and change my life through doing that in a peaceful way, then I can do that about everything and anything. Um, so yeah, cool. All right. Uh, <laughs> I just thought I would get that out. Hopefully that resonates with you. Um, if it does... I would love to make more content around this. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'm happy to answer them. I've been on this meditation, changing my belief systems, my thoughts, my worldview for four years, four years now. And there's a lot of things that I have been able to release and come to peace with and live a anxious, free, peaceful lifestyle. Uh, I'm not saying like, I don't get anxiety anymore sometimes because that was actually a really, really big emotion that I grew up on. I think my mom said I came out of the womb an anxious baby that couldn't poop. So that is still a deep-rooted one. But I'd say like now, I used to be anxious 90% of the time and at peace like 10% of the time of my life. Maybe when I was like alone or I was like, sleeping <laughs> and now i say it's like the opposite i think 10 percent i'm i can experience anxiety and stuff but the other 90 percent i'm pretty much at peace and feeling very very zen very whole probably like the freest i've ever felt in my entire life so yeah it's 1 a.m so i'm gonna hit the hay wait i think i think this 